Okay. We love each other, okay? Okay. <laughs> Pretend that we love each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, three, two, one. Hi, this is Nam from Easy Sunday Club. And this is Kathy. And uh, today we're going to be walking through Kathy's newest product, this number Sea Creatures Blanket. Which launched yesterday or early November. <laughs> yeah, so we're super excited about it. And we wanted to walk you through um, everything from the conception of the design, uh, the painting of it, the design of it, and the manufacturing of it to this final product that you see here right in this box. The good, bad, and ugly of blanket creation. Yeah, so a lot of times you see stuff on our Instagram feed and it looks like it just came out of thin air and it was magic, but we're trying to pull behind the curtain a little bit to show you uh, kind of the, a lot, all the work that went into making this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's get to it. All right. Nobody wants to listen to this. <laughs> you have all about intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the actual design of it. So uh, when did you actually come up with the design and concept to make a numbers sea creature blanket? Well, the first blanket I created was actually this alphabet blanket that I made two and a half years ago. It was the first product I made that wasn't of my art on paper and it turned out to be it turned out to sell really well it was actually by far my best selling product and because of that i decided to pivot my art business more to focus on baby goods and the baby world especially since my art was already geared towards children uh, room and nursery so with the alphabet blanket in hand i thought you know what other complimentary product can i create that doesn't require me to start over in a new product category. And if you're a new parent or parent of young kids, you know what are some of the common things that kids tend to learn at a younger age. Um, and this is all along the theme of me wanting to create like, educational and useful art. So yeah. alphabet is one, and you know, toddlers learn about colors and shapes and animals and numbers. Numbers is just something that's easily categorizable and I already kind of had a picture of how it would look like on this large square fabric. Um, so that's how I decided to focus on that theme for the second blanket. So when did you actually start designing this in your head? Was it like last year or? It started in yeah, early last year, 2018, and as you know, we got pregnant last year. So I didn't start painting the first piece of the series, which is this whale shark, until summer of 2018. So you started to come up with the design in early um, 2018. When did you actually decide that you wanted to do the, the sea creatures with the numbers? Uh, well, I wanted to focus on sea creatures because one, I felt like I, in my previous painting experience, I didn't paint a lot of animals from the ocean. Um, I still wanted to double down on animals because that's what, that's kind of the category that I want to be known in. And also from the alphabet blanket, I got really good feedback on the narwhal and the humpback whale. So I just wanted to double down on a know and an environment of creatures and then how did you actually come up with like the 10 creatures you chose did you just paint a sea creature whenever you felt like it when you started painting or did you like plan it all out in a list like mm -hmm. this is number one this is number two kind of take me through that well before I had a kid or we had a kid I would have done the first approach which is whatever I felt like painting mm -hmm. I will sit down and spend three hours lollygagging and searching the pin searching Pinterest for yeah. inspiration. But after the baby, I had to plan out my monthly calendar, which days I'm going to paint, what animal, 
leave i've had extra days for unpredictable things like child getting sick or having to go to the doctors or just a million other things that you can think of when you're a new mom so long story i mean to answer your question yes this one i had a very clear plan of what um each number would indicate at least i thought i did but no we, we can get into the design details later too because Obviously, I painted a lot more than what you see here. Yeah, the so book. there's some animals that you included on the list, but actually didn't make the cut, right? Yeah, either they just weren't as good or yeah. it didn't fit the composition. So I wanted to show the audience a, a couple examples of the original paintings. Um, so you had uh, the beluga whales for two, for, for number three, you had three yeah. beluga whales. This There's is just two of them. So you painted an extra one. Yeah. Um, you also had uh, the nine um, puffer fish, which um, you painted them nine kind of like in a row in a grid right here, but they ended up kind of floating around. Mm -hmm. And then you also had um, the original sea turtles mm -hmm. yeah. here. And then um, you also had the seahorses, where the seahorses are really big here, but they actually, the final ended up um, yeah. really small. So um, some questions I wanted to ask about the painting was, um, was either being pregnant or um, when you were in the first, when you started picking up, picking up painting again after you had the, um, the baby, did that affect your art at all? It didn't really affect the art, the outcome of the art as much as it did how I worked um, because you know, I didn't have a lot of time and I was still tired and figuring out how to be a mom. But I also cared about this business and wanted to continue growing it. So I was very efficient with painting. I mean, I set, like I said earlier, I had a schedule down of which day I was going to paint which animals and I was just very decisive with things. If I wasn't happy with the painting midway, I would move on to the next one or I'll start over again. Yeah. So all of these are finals, but there are many, many more pieces that are in the reject pile. Yeah, um, just a quick call out. So when an artist creates an art, an, an original piece of art, there can this original piece of art can have multiple lifetime so or multiple uses so in our case we usually Kathy makes an original piece of art we can sell it as original art piece we can license the seahorses we can sell them as a print we can sell them as a card or you can put them on a big collage as a blanket so we always um, try to think of you know multiple uses so we can get the most out of the time spent making art and that is one of the advantages to owning your own intellectual property yeah I, as an artist because if I were to hire another artist to do the work, then you know we would have to sign a very specific contract that stipulates what I can use our art on. Yeah. But here I can play with different formats, and you no, know, I could not use it at all, and I wouldn't have I had have spent the time. But um, yeah, yeah, a lot of times. And then also, certain artists only want to only believe their art should be in one form only and for a certain amount of time and, and that's it. So it just depends on, um, on what your philosophy is. Yeah, I am what a lot of artists would call a sellout, but <laughs> fortunately I didn't go to art school. I'm not surrounded by fine artists or you know, the purists out there. So to me, like commercializing art is something of necessity when I decided to quit my corporate job to make art for a living. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's reality. So after you finish um, all the original art pieces, um, take me through how you came up with this design. Yeah, so after I had all my 30 something pieces scanned in, uh, I had to edit each image as they were done, um, remove the background so each image is transparent so that I can move them individually. So. In Photoshop, they're each of their own layer so that I can kind of play around with the composition. And if you notice here, there's some proportional difference, there's some size differences, and that was intentional as well. I wanted this, the sea creatures in this blanket to be relatively proportional. It might not be super accurate, but trust me, I googled how long is a damn 
whale shark compared to a harbor seal compared to a spotted eagle ray and if the seashell is too damn small next to a whale shark i make it a little larger just so you know you can still see it but the proportion reference is there and uh, when i started composing i started with the biggest piece in the focal point which is the whale shark and i kind of move on from actually now that Think about it, the lower the number, the larger the animal. So yeah. by the time you get to 10, you have these tiny seashells. Yeah. That makes sense. And then was there any thought of uh, when a kid is using this blanket to learn numbers, whether they're going to learn it one, two, three in, in sequential order versus in more of a collage, find the number uh, where it is? Yeah. and. I know like, when it comes to learning numbers, parents or the kid is going to use multiple tools, right? If they just rely on my blanket, they're going to count numbers all wrong. <laughs> but I wanted this to be kind of fun and playful too. My original idea was actually to make it sort of like a Where's Wally sort of game where I have all the smaller animals spread out so that you have to search for them. But Compositionally, it didn't work quite well, especially with the color grouping. It just made the blanket look too busy. So I group all the numbers and the corresponding creatures closer to each other, which made it look a bit more clean. And then um, how did, tell me a little bit about the design and the placement and the color of the numbers that you, you finalized. Um, most of my products, well, my blankets at least, I want it to be as gender neutral as possible. And since sea creatures are already in shades of greens and blues mostly, uh, I was just sticking to that shade. And it seems like there's a lot of blues already, so I wanted the numbers to look more green, and I landed on this mint color, which turned out pretty good. Like the green sea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then not only did you have to uh, design the final design, um, you also had to choose the colors of the materials of the blanket and designed the back of the blanket, which had these wave, wave patterns. So can you take me through the back of the blanket and also the color of the trim? Yeah, I usually design a, have a more neutral design for the, the back. And this is a repeat pattern, so waves just made sense to me. Um, I think I painted a couple of different designs, but no, I want parents to be able to flip it for something more toned down and neutral if they're out and about know taking the baby on a stroller walk or or whatnot uh, and uh, the trim is a different fabric we can have a whole other video about each individual piece but uh, we needed the trim to hold obviously hold the four layers of cotton muslin that is the main part of the blanket and uh, we also added these loops here to, along the top to hang up like kind of like a tapestry, right? Yeah, and that was also from customer feedback from the alphabet blanket. So yeah, we do listen and sometimes we implement those changes. So now that you got the design, is it all is it as easy as sending over a TIFF file to your manufacturer and they print it out to the blanket and we get it right away or <laughs> is it that easy like magic? Yeah, maybe we need to explain what a TIFF file is, <laughs> which is a high resolution <laughs> Uh, digital file of, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's basically the file format of how yeah. our manufacturer received um, the final design of this, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then after they received it, was it a matter of them just printing it out really easily or was there like a sampling process? Yeah, I picked the most finicky medium for fabric printing. Watercolor with all of its gradients and rough edges makes it really hard to calibrate when printed on fabric. So we went through, luckily we went through three rounds of sampling this time. With Alphabet, it was a lot longer, but it still took seven to eight months from when I first sent the design uh, because- To actually getting the final product, right? To getting it in our hands yeah. last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, um, but one thing I did learn this round is to keep the grouping of colors in overall design somewhat close. I mean, there's yellows and reds, but mostly you see blues and greens. It just speeds up the production process a little more, um, but not significantly, just because I'm still working in watercolor. Yeah, and also um, 
on our alphabet blanket, the animals were too close to the margins or the edges of the blanket, so we had a lot of misprints, whereas um, the margins here are a lot more generous, so um, we have less um, uh, blanket defects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, last thing I wanted to get to was uh, the design of the box. So um, our blankets come into shelf-ready uh, packaging like this, and there's a window so you can see uh, the blanket. And um, there's a picture of the blanket on the back of the box. But can you tell us, um, Kathy designed the box as well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and even though she didn't know anything about package design before mm -hmm. making blankets, but can you tell us a little, any calls about the blanket, the color of the box, the design? Yeah, so like I said, I learned a lot from the first round of designing a blanket. This time, um, I knew with the display window in mind, because my design is non-repeat, I wanted a cover animal that would capture the, you know, the customer's attention. So. Part of how I composed those animals was that I knew like the shark or the whale or the beluga whale would be kind of easy to, when it's folded up, it would land on the window of the box. So if you were to divide this up into fours going each way, this is how we ended up folding the blanket and you'll have the face of these three animals in the window. And you can always play around with the others, but that was kind of an extra effort that I put into. Yeah, another call out, Kathy keeps on um, making the point of saying that the pattern's non-repeat. Usually when, um, commonly when you see a children's blanket, in order to scale it, they use a repeat pattern, which means that um, they use the same pattern over and over again. Uh, what that means for them is that they can print up to the edges, and if they make a mistake here and there, you can't really tell. Whereas here, um, the patterns don't repeat, and you, have to really you keep it centered. yeah, it has to be centered. And as the printer is going back and forth, putting on layers of ink, um, they have to make sure that it, it's it's always in the in, in the right um, in the right position to be able to get all those gradients that you see here. So yeah. you know, sometimes when you screen print, you're dealing with very few colors, but here we're dealing with um, a oh, lot of different oh, colors. So okay. it it things, the environment of the um, of where they make the blanket, print the blanket, um, they have to calibrate for uh, for weather, for humidity, uh, for ink, so uh, for material as well. So that, that's why the process can take uh, longer than usual. Yep. Yeah, but um, because it was so difficult and it was so um, time consuming to make the blanket and we also had a kid in the process. I think that's what makes us really proud of the product, right? Yeah. Um, the hard is what makes it so great, as they yeah. say. So um, super excited about this. Um, these are now available for sale on uh, easysundayclub.com. And we'll be in select stores. Yeah. Just on our website. Yeah. So uh, as I said, uh, super excited. I'm super proud of Kathy as well for pulling, pulling this off. And um, well, if you have, yeah. What was your favorite from this whole process? My favorite part? You were involved in some of it. Yeah, making taxi driver comments. <laughs> About, why is that so green? <laughs> uh, why does the puffer fish look angry? I think um, when you get the samples back and you see the packaging and it's for real, um, that's pretty awesome. But I think, um, Next. You also had to volunteer washing dishes and <laughs> and bring home dinner on yeah, nights where it's like I'm behind schedule. Yeah. I need to finish this. Thing. And I, I gained a lot a lot of weight from the pregnancy as well. So yeah. oh, didn't. <laughs> um, you know, the whole time. I think picking up the blankets uh, when they were shipped here when they were shipped uh, um, was really exciting. And also um, now that they're being sent out to the the ether sphere and um, people are enjoying it. And when I see, um, cause I had a blankie when I was a kid and for some kids that this is their blankie is pretty it's freaking awesome. Nice, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite part of the process? I think it's seeing the designs come together. It's any of the creative parts. I mean, all the other parts are just, some of them are very painful, but the creative parts are enjoyable. Um, Seeing the samples come together, but that also made me nervous. I'm like, hey, I guess, but.
I'm gonna spend all this money to make this blanket. I hope it sells. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of ups and downs, but I think it turned out really well. And uh, I hope you like it from what you see on screen. And tell us what we should make next. Should we make another blanket or should we print this on something else? Onesies, swaddles, um, large poster prints. Yeah. Um, your feedback is always recommended. Everything from the product to uh, the videos we make. Um, we are very happy to share this with you. And we hope to see you very soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.